It flows super nice though. This is actually like, it's Let not it. just dripping off, like it is actually holding on, on the surface. It's sticking and coating. Yeah. That's nice. Speed paint! Look what we just got in the mail. Our humor cat with a new version of speed paint, speed paint 2.0. We're gonna uh, discuss a little bit about it, about this new product, this new shiny, happy, fun thing. Instead of just talking about it, I wanna show you how I would use it, some different methodology on it. This is Goat Boy from Bulls, and this is the Army Painter Speed Paint Mega Set 2.0 with all kinds of colors included, including the metallics! Speed paint metallics. So we're going to show three different styles today. We've got a normal slap chop method. We've got a more cream to brown based slap chop method. And then I want to show how it flows over metallics because that's always a very interesting way. And you can do some of the Horus Heresy designs with that. It's a real basic uh, usage of the uh, mega set, trying to utilize just the speed paints themselves without kind of going into other options, utilizing some of the other armor painters, other stuff or other paints, other other things. If you really want to know more, if you want to see like more advanced techniques or other options with this, we would more happy to maybe do some more. If you guys want it, comment away. Maybe we'll come back and I'll do something neat and paint something else in a single sitting and you'll watch me uh, go uh, knock it out. This one is going to be more of a slap chop method. I did go a little bit different. I went black to purple and then I went gray to white. I went with the purple because this is a Nurgle looking guy and so I'm going to do greens and it kind of it, it cools it down in a way that I think will kind of uh, give it a neat tone. Um, I usually like doing this method when I want to go with a kind of a gross sickly cold type aspect. I think you can also do blues if you want to as well. This is more of a straight slap chop which is where you basically create an undertone paint very easily using dry brush methods to basically build up the color set and then we'll wash it and utilizing that pre-shading you do it will then shade with the actual speed paint or anything else on there I would say this one's probably what you're gonna do for a lot of stuff if you want to quickly get army done and you want to kind of get it in that nice very simple scheme of uh, going from dark to light slap chop your way to victory as I call it and you know get things done quickly and efficiently so you're gonna do this one pretty much on any mini. I think it's less effective on vehicles, but I have seen a lot of people utilize uh, vehicles to do this on. That one, you have to be much more controlled with how you dry brushing, how you're building the color, the color lighting on it. You could use this for almost anything. I would do this tone for Marines. I'd do this tone for anything from Nurgle to other thing else. It doesn't really matter. This is probably the more uh, broadest and easiest one to do because everyone has uh, usually a dark uh, black, a dark color, and then gray and white. So like the Nurgle guy, uh, I went with little dark tones on him because, well, it's Nurgle and I tried a little bit of the wet blending techniques on it as it was a wet paint, especially with the metallics and adding some of the color into it. I would definitely hit this up again with a little bit of brighter shine on stuff, bring up some of the skin tone. Cause I tried the decayed, I might've gone with more of a greener tone, but I kind of wanted to go this decayed flesh, which gave this really dark and grimy tone on it. I would do little tiny things, bring it up cause I just wanted to have a little bit of brightness. I did a little bit of the dinging on the, of the armor with the silver and again, I would probably go ahead and bring a, a, a green across it to basically highlight those little marks on it. But overall, like I thought the flow was really good. I felt that, it, I mean, metallics are awesome. The other paints flowed well. Just as a technique to get your base shades and base layers made is great. You, like you get an army and you get ready to go and something this dark and grimy could be a lot of fun, especially on any kind of gross, gribbly looking things. This is like the kind of perfect starting point to get those. And once you get to that stage, you can slowly add more design to it or, or tweaks it and make a really awesome looking model. So normally with a lot of speed paint, you want to paint on a white um, subject, and I decided to go a little different method here. I went with a lot more warmer colors, that's why I kind of went with the Cassos, that way the golds would show up a little bit more there. I went and went from a black to a brown to a cream to a white. And so what will this will do, this is basically a, a, what they call online a slap chop method, or what we call most of the time an underpainting method. Usually you see an oil painting where you basically would uh, almost sketch out your values for what you want in your painting, and that's what you use as you use layers on it, because the speed paint is not opaque. It's a thin, you know, thin clicker with some kind of resin and it to basically give it some form, and that's what I want to try to use here. So we want to use the browns and the warmness that are in these colors to bring a different kind of tone to it. So when I'm going to do some of the metallics on here, and I'm going to use some of the other color once I kind of shift this up a little 
little bit. So that's the plan on this one. So the bigger advantage of this is that a lot of times we do slap chop, it's black to gray to white. So you're not doing any kind of colors underneath it. So every time you add a color layer uh, underneath a kind of a see-through layer, you're not bringing anything to the other, other than just lightening and darkening it. Adding cream or browns to it will add yellow and brown to it and kind of give it a, a richer tone. So usually you'll see things where it'll feel a lot kind of deeper kind of tone set. That's why a lot of times when you paint flesh tones, you usually like browns and everything else on there instead of just like solid blacks to create the lines, these browns create this kind of warmer feeling tone. And especially important on things like gold and leathers, because that's what, you know, majority of custode is. So that's what kind of, that's why I kind of went with this direction. So this kind of a process is probably a lot better on anything kind of gold based or anything you want to be a warmer color. So usually I would say gold, you can go with something with a lot of leather and heavier kind of brown based colors on it that I think this will work out a little bit better on. It also might be better when you, if you went to a more flesh tone thing. So let's say fire slayers and stuff like that are just much more fleshy, or if you want to go into a much warmer toned orc, it'll have a different kind of tone set than the normal straight black and white. I messed around with the uh, new Speed Paint Metallic Gold. I really liked it a lot. It flowed really, really well. You can see it creates this neat kind of tone effect with metallics, which automatically have a shine to it. And now it kind of acts like metallic wash, which is a very interesting thing. We really haven't seen stuff like that, but it flowed really well. Uh, you can see this one. I, all I did was paint the gold, paint the robes. I mean, those robes look great. Great for a quick, simple robes. The hair looks awesome. All I do from this point is probably just take it and do a little bit of highlights, fill in the little gaps uh, on the shoulder pads that are normally a colored of whatever option I choose. Maybe do a little bit of edge highlight on things and I would call it a day. I mean, this is awesome and this took me no time as you saw in the video. This is cool. This is a new, uh, fresh new thing and I think uh, it will really be helpful to people doing the painting. Again, all that I would do is probably uh, have a better sense of how I did some of this, uh, the, the pre-shading stuff. This guy looks pretty awesome at a standpoint for just uh, like 15 minutes. I did this one, uh, primed it a bright silver because I think there's a lot of method with uh, speed paints and then the other kind of ones like that that go over a metallic bright color. What happens is, is basically you shade the metal. So a lot of times you'll see candy coated applications like a candy red, everything like that. The trick most usually is just to paint it a bright silver and then you do whatever tone you want it to be shiny. So then whatever paint will actually tone it and make it different. So this one, I'm probably gonna do and split a bunch of different colors so you can see how everyone is. That way you can see reds and purples and blues and see how the silver uh, affects it and how it makes it look a little bit different than what you expect. It's also a really easy way if you want to uh, do something like Grey Knights or anything else that isn't just straight metallic or straight silver. I had some success using a speed paint over silver with bl uh, black and I found that it really created a really nice dark, dark, dark metallic. I'm not gonna do that here because because I didn't want to do this one here because I want to showcase some of the other colors going green and everything else here. You can do a brown over it and it makes for a really easy gold or a yellow over it. it makes for a really simple gold. It makes a very bright, bright, bright gold. So this one, I basically went through and put a, picked a bunch of different colors and slapped it on over metallic. I did this because there's, I think there's a lot of interesting things you can do over metallic spray, especially since it works pretty well with Space Marines. It really coats well. It gives a nice tone. You've seen some of this in the Horus Heresy where they'll take Thousand Suns, will go with like this hot metallic red or a candy apple red. And this is a way to really do it easily with by just spray painting your model silver and coating it with that color. Once it's dry, you can kind of affect it, do everything else, pick other things out and do another wash on it to create other shading, but this really kind of helps that tone. It also works pretty well when you start doing uh, power weapons too. I went with a real dark blue because I picked the wrong dark blue. I thought I was going to pick a brighter blue and I did not. I like this pink over uh, over on the on the uh, shoulder pad. Uh, I think that's a really nice pink. I think finding a good brown color makes for a really interesting bronze. And I think there's some options here where you take some of the yellow or yellowish brown and make a gold. Sometimes with gold, you can do this and it'll create a lot more um, texture set on it. Yeah, I think it's kind of fun and kind of thing to kind of do this uh, slap on and just see what how it happens and find something you like. Best thing you can do with most this stuff is take a model and just throw a bunch of colors on it and test it. See what looks good, pick what you want on it, and then you just paint the rest of your models this way. So if you like the Army Painter stuff, check out the RPG Paint Kit. It will help you out giving you a more uh, flat paints, and then the other speed paints will help you get your things done. So check it out, see our little video, and uh, be amazed. Ponder upon the orb that is Army Painter's D&D. <sighs> Click upon it and read about it.